what you've got to enjoy is being able to get out here. This is ours, shared. That's the important thing. And as long as you can try and keep your home warm, which is difficult, many people are freezing and hungry. It's uh, a lot of the big old Victorian flats now, they've turned them in, for houses I mean, they've turned them into flats. And what they do, they rip out the fireplaces, they put on, for, if they're renting, they put either storage heaters or wall heaters and they are expensive to run. And not only that, they don't send out the heat. Whereas the Victorians would have had a blazing fire. These Iron Age people would have had a blazing fire to keep warm. There's a lot of people now in cold, damp flats because they can't afford. If you're, say you're on universal credit and you've got to live on seven pound a week after you paid your bills, right? Or maybe a bit, maybe 15 pound. But you've got either, what are you gonna do? Eat or have heating? It's like that. How they expect somebody to live on say 67 pounds a week you have to contribute towards the council tax as well and your rent. These are vulnerable people I'm talking about and people sometimes who are working have got children are on low wages So, you know, it reminds you when you're out here and you're getting cold and then, you know, you've got to go back to your home, which could be full of pot smokers or damp, you know, or both in the building you live in. Um, but you've been out, you've been out in this beauty, but you know you've got to go back, you know. So you have to make the most of what you've got when you're poor, because this is free. I'm enjoying coming out there while I can um, as well because, you know, it's taken me 60 years, nearly 60 years before I, I found this place. I've got other places, of course, like the Quandox, which I've been going to for, since I was a child. But to discover this, which I can, in theory, still get to by bus. It's a bus that comes to Churchill down there and you just have to walk a little way to get to these valleys here because if you otherwise you've got to rely on others now in my experience you then know uh, they might not openly say it but you then know I found that you ask anyone for a favour you then know and uh, it, you know what I mean it's, it's not given freely so uh, but when somebody say well you perhaps you should um, do something in return you know so you can't win really but if you're an independent hermit you like type. to do it yourself and I have been like that since I was a child really basically I have even though I had four sisters I um, I felt like I I didn't have anyone really it was a weird feeling um, from a young age so my mum always seemed to be working uh, we did have lovely food and lovely Sundays. Sunday tea, Sunday lunch, dinner and that. Lovely Christmases, apart from one. Uh, and apart from two, no, two, out of my, at the time, 14 years, I had two awful Christmases. The one when my mother died on the Boxing Day. She was only 54. And the other, when some... A slave person made her 
treated her like a slave, made her work and keep her away from her children on Christmas Day. And we were waiting and waiting. We didn't know what to do about the dinner or anything. I remember that. I might have been about 10 or 11. But my mum gave up work after that. Because she, she wanted to sort of walk out or cause a fuss. She stayed. She obeyed. And look what it happened. Some of this will be edited because I have tried on this video not to do anything too personal. But it's very difficult once you get going. You don't want to ruin it. It's been a lovely walk. But sometimes, what does they mean ruin when you're, this is your life? You know, this is how you live. Why should you have to keep it a secret? I often wonder where that goes. I sometimes wonder if that goes further up and then brings you back down opposite that other place. I often wonder that. Anyway, I've got to get a move on anyway. I'm glad it's not too late because I've got no windscreen wipers working because I need a fuse. One day I will. I say that. There's lots of things I want to do. And... Uh, I, I never get round to it. Oh, I just could join that track one day. So we're leaving Dolbury Warren now. Coming away from the fort and Roborough Warren and uh, the nature reserve with all its beauty, especially in the summers as well. Um, coming down through a little hamlet now near Churchill, near Churchill and near Roborough. I can't remember what it's actually got a name. I think this is a little tiny bit, but I can't remember what it is. Um, <coughs> but I should get back before the rain comes. Oh, well, look. I've got this on other videos, don't forget about the little cat flap and the little cat, look. I love that. And that girl, I say she could live down here with her dog, see? She could. All nut house. Like a little hobbit home, innit? Hey, okay, like a little hobbit home. Yeah, I, f I can feel rain somewhere in the air, but uh, I just video going down here as well, just as well. I've taken photos before of this place. Oh, Dolbury Rising. Ah. Lovely, they've got a little walk in the wood there. Because the thing is, when you do live in a flat like me with no garden or anything and horrible neighbours, you come out here and you see how other people live and what they got, and that you had something once with a house and a garden, and it's all gone. It's all gone. Victim of circumstance. <laughs> but you're still alive, Sheila, and you're getting out here. This is what counts. We've all got our ornaments. I've still got all my stuff. I've got my hobbies, family tree, but I... <clears throat> I do know I'm getting more tired. Ah, oh, a little tiny ornament there. More tired, the rock cottage that's called. So I don't seem to be able to last as long when I'm on the internet as I used to. I mean, before I was never, I could go all night searching for stuff. <coughs> and now I, I, I'm not very organised either. Now. I'm very spontaneous what I do because there's so much to do. I just think, oh, I'll do that. You know, there's no plan, really. I'm having a go at the wood tree at the moment. I'm going to try and stay on the wood tree for now. Do all the lateral and verticals. 
I found out something about one of my great grandfathers that he was an apprentice butcher at the start when he was 15. Ah, it's the first time I've really examined that uh, census properly. And he was actually living with a family as an apprentice butcher. Because his father, Joseph, was a butcher, and his father before him, was William, was a butcher. Uh, and they became fishmongers for some reason. Uh, so it's all very interesting. Man, they had a stall. And my dad used to work in Billingsgate Market um, as well. So. Anyway, this is the A38. I'm going to turn off while I cross this busy road. Sometimes I walk down the hill and go through a track that way, but I can't be bothered, so I'm just going to cross over over here. I went up there earlier. I went up there. So I've done a big circular and come back. But there is a, a turning down there you can get, but I'm not going to do it today. I'm just going to cross over. I'll be driving up this A38 in a minute to find a garage to, with the fuse for my windscreen wipers, which is blown. Okay. So here we are, back in the little wood. That little hamlet was called Dolbarrow, by the way, over there. Dolbarrow. That's why it's called Dolbarrow Warren. Oh. I'll just keep it rolling for a little bit going up here that was enough for me today actually I do feel my legs are a bit achy yeah that was enough for today problem is I did get quite my hands got really cold earlier There's always big beef cows in there, in that field, and they seem to be out all year round with a big bull. I can see the bull now. Sometimes they're along here. Yeah, I can, I can just about see the bull through. And I just. Oh, wait, where is it? Through there. In there's the cattle. In there. Well, it's been a pleasant walk. Probably about three hours. I'll have a look on the. I'll have a look on the mobile. See what the time is. I haven't had a drink. I think it's four minutes past two. We started at half past ten. So yes, yeah, three and a half hours. I said about four hours. That worked out just right, actually. That worked out just. We yeah, we'd done about four hours by the time I parked Alberta up and everything and walked up the hill there. Very pleasant indeed. Well, we've had Guy Fawkes, we've had the Bridgewater Fair, we've had the carnival, firework displays, the beach races at Weston. Um, now it's uh, the election. Apparently, nativity plays are having to be postponed 
or cancelled because the Tories need the halls in some of the schools. Anyway, not to worry about it. It's all a big mess if you ask me. The whole, I think we should have the Green Party and myself do some big changes for the environment and uh, and health. Yeah, that's what we should do. Labour and the Conservatives are not the same. They still have big divides and nothing like each other. They often have to carry out each other's policies though. And so it feels like it doesn't matter who's in charge. That's the feeling you get. And uh, I mean, I'm all for the revolution myself. <laughs> But it doesn't have to be a violent, chaotic type, full of anarchy. At one time I thought we were evolving, doing quite well. We had our NHS, we had at one time a really good education, not really good, but we had a, opportunities, more opportunities for young people to get higher education. I mean, I went through the grant system. I've got three degrees and two professional qualifications. And I was doing a PhD. Basically, I had to cancel because I stopped getting help. And it was very expensive. Um, and I, well, I'd had enough of studying by then. I just wanted to do family tree. So I didn't pursue it. I just, the ambition had gone. 